from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. An Introduction to the IQ-5 Battery Analyzer Hi, I'm Kevin Watson, and I'm the Equipment Repair Officer here at NLS in Washington, D.C. This video is an introduction to the using the IQ-5 Battery Analyzer. NLS provides the IQ-5 Battery Analyzer to the repair network for testing and analyzing talking book machine batteries. All batteries, whether from a machine returned from a patron or from new stock, should be tested before using. Before we start analyzing batteries, I want to show you how to set up the IQ-5 so that it's ready to use. To set up your IQ-5 battery analyzer, you will need a flat blade screwdriver and six DTB adapters. The DTB adapters are available from NLS. You can order them using the WOW system under stock number iTech C. If you are going to be analyzing C1 batteries, you can order the C1 adapters from the WOW system too, stock number iTech B. Remove your analyzer from the box. Note that the IQ5 is cooled by a fan in the back, so be sure you leave enough room behind it to circulate air. Your IQ5 comes equipped with a power button, a printer port, six adapter slots, and a display screen, and three buttons for each slot. Setup To set up your IQ5, you will need to remove the slot covers and install the adapters for each slot you plan to use. You should not plug the unit in until all adapters are installed. Remove the cover on the first slot using the screwdriver. Be sure to keep all covers you remove nearby because you will have to put them back on each slot not in use. Never install or uninstall adapters while the unit is plugged in. Note that the connection of the far left is positioned a bit different from the others. You should always connect the adapters beginning from the far right before connecting the others. Only remove the covers of slots you plan to attach an adapter to. Connect the adapter to the slot connection. Repeat this effort for each slot you plan to use until all of the covers are removed and adapters connected. Make sure the power button is off, then plug in your IQ5. Turn the power on. Note that you do not need to turn your IQ5 off unless you are going to install or uninstall an adapter. Now that all of your adapters are attached and your IQ5 is plugged in and powered up, we're ready to begin testing batteries. To demonstrate the IQ5, I'm going to make use of several boxes. This is just one way you can organize your battery testing operation. Here I have four boxes. I've labeled them Pass, Test, Fail, and condition. When a player is returned from a patron, you should remove the battery and place it in the test box. You should take a known good battery and install it in the player. As you test your batteries using the IQ5, you should pull one from the test box and then put it in the pass, fail, or condition box depending on the results of the test. The IQ5 has five modes. Charge, Discharge, Cycle Test, Analyze, Condition. Charge. Charges a battery and sets it to trickle, which is a holding charge. Discharge. Discharges a battery to test, charges the battery, and then sets it to trickle. Analyze. Charges, discharges to test, recharges, and then sets the battery to trickle. Condition. Charges and discharges to test a battery three times and then sets it to trickle. Cycle test. Charges and discharges to test. This loop has to be manually stopped by removing the battery. Charging mode, discharging mode, and cycle test mode. Generally speaking, repair staff will not be using the charging, discharging, or cycle test modes on the IQ-5. When you attach a battery to the IQ-5, it will automatically go into charging mode unless you select another option. Using the IQ-5 for charging batteries is not recommended. 
a digital talking book player will charge a battery in half the time. If you only need to charge a battery, use a player instead to keep the slots on your IQ5 available for testing or conditioning. Discharging and cycle test modes are advanced functions of the IQ5 that we will not be covering in this video. Analyze mode. Used batteries. Analyze mode will be the most used mode on your IQ5. To analyze a battery that has been out in the field, connect it to the adapter and push the Analyze button. In my demonstration, I'm going to take six batteries from my test box, attach them to the IQ5 adapters, and push the Analyze button on each display. The IQ5 will take several hours to analyze a battery, so you can leave and come back. When you return to your IQ5, check the display panel for the results. The lowest acceptable level for battery analysis is 650 milliamp hours, which is equivalent to 16 hours of playtime in a digital talking book player. If you get a reading of 650 milliamp hours or higher, remove that battery from the IQ5 and place it in the box marked Pass. If you get a reading of 649 milliamp hours or below, remove that battery from the IQ5 and place it in the box marked Fail. Remember, this is for batteries that have been out in the field. Analyze mode. Unused batteries. Now we're going to talk about analyzing unused batteries. To keep your operation as efficient as possible, you should analyze a sample from every box of unused batteries. Remove six unused batteries from the box. Connect each of them to a slot on the IQ5. Push the Analyze button on each display, leave the IQ5 to do the analyzing, and come back later. When you return, read the results on each display. For practical purposes, we should set the acceptable limit for unused batteries at 1000 milliamp hours, which translates to 24 hours of playtime on the DTBM. Remove batteries that return a reading of 1000 milliamp hours or better from the IQ5 and place them in the box marked Pass. If any of the batteries in the test sample return a reading of less than 1000 milliamp hours, you should remove them and place them in the box labeled Condition. It's a good idea to analyze the entire box of unused batteries if any in your sample yield results lower than 1000 milliamp hours to weed out any defective batteries. Conditioning mode. Conditioning unused batteries will either bring them up to acceptable levels or it will detect if they're defective. To condition batteries, remove them from the condition box, attach them to the slots, and press the condition button on each display. Conditioning mode goes through three charge and discharge cycles. It may take a while to run through the cycles, so once you press the condition button, you can leave and come back later. When you return, read the results on each display. Again, we're looking for 1000 milliamp hours or better. Batteries that show 1000 milliamp hours or better on the display when the conditioning cycle is complete can be removed and placed in the box labeled Pass. When the conditioning cycle is complete, you should run batteries that read less than 1000 milliamp hours through a second condition cycle by pressing the condition button. Again, this will take some time, so come back and check on it later. After a second conditioning cycle, if your batteries are still reading under 1000 milliamp hours, it's safe to say they're defective. They should be removed from the IQ5 and placed in the fail box for proper disposal. This concludes the introduction to the IQ5 battery analyzer. Remember that we are a service-oriented operation, and it's up to you to make sure that DTBM batteries are functioning at an acceptable level when the players are delivered to patrons. If you have problems or questions about using the IQ5 battery analyzer, please contact me, Kevin Watson, at 202-707-9298 or by email at kwat at loc dot gov. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. 
visit us at loc.gov.